All right, today we're going to do a quick review of differentiation. All right, we're going to start with the basic rules. So if we have a function x to the power of n, when we differentiate that, we know that the n comes down the front, this coefficient, and we take one away from the power. Okay, so for any n, we can differentiate like this. What else can we do? If we've got trig functions, so say sine of x, we know that differentiates to cos of x. Okay, so all this should be relatively familiar to you. Cos of x, that differentiates to negative sine of x. Okay. Uh, e of x, e to the power of x, its derivative is itself, which is nice. It's a lovely, lovely little formula. And log to the base e of x, that differentiates to one on x. Okay, so they're the basic rules we need to know. And then we can use those uh, in conjunction with some other rules to differentiate lots of different types of functions. Okay, so let's start with our good friend, the chain rule. Okay, the chain rule. Just say I have a function inside another function. Okay, so the way to recognize this is I've got um, y equals some function inside another function. Okay, so the way to, an example might be, just say I had y equals the square root of um, 2x cubed plus 1. Okay, so this is a function within a function. I've got, I've got this polynomial, 2x cubed plus 1, inside a square root function. So if I've got a function within another function, so I've got square root u, and where u is a function of x. So I could write this as let u equal 2x cubed plus 1. So that's my function inside. So that gives me y of u. So y of u is the square root of u. Okay. So to differentiate it, all right, so I want dy dx. That's my derivative. I've got these two ways of looking at it. I've got, I could take dy du and then multiply that by du dx. So the way I th think about this is my du's would cancel out and I end up with dy dx. So dy du, or the square root function, I can use my, I could use half u to the neg half. I differentiate dy du. And then I'm going to multiply that by du dx. So du dx, 3 comes out the front. I've got 6x squared. Pl uh, the plus 1 goes away. Okay, so what have I got all together? I've got six, to, uh, 6 divided by 2, that's 3. 3 u to the neg half times x squared equals... Okay, so I can put my u back in. 3u, which is 2x cubed plus 1 to the neg half, times x squared. I could I could write this as 3x squared. This is just algebra now. Put this on the bottom. Gives me 2x cubed plus 1 to the half. And then instead of having it to the power of half, I'd write it as a square root sign because it looks really pretty. Square root of 2x cubed plus 1. Okay, there we go. Got that. Cool. All right. So that's the chain rule. Okay. Chain rule. Next step is to look at product rule. Where we've got a function multiplied by another function. So product rule. Where I've got y equals some function multiplied 
by another function. Okay. All right. So an example of that could be, let's have y equals sine of x um, times. Mm, let's do. Should I just do e to the two x? Yeah, e to the two x. Let's do that. Okay. So what's this one going to be? Okay, so when I've got this, I've got to write down the rule for the product rule. When I've got this, that means do y dx. And the easiest way to think about it is I just take the derivative of one function, times it by the original other function, then add on the derivative of this function times the other function. So I write that as f prime of x times the original h of x plus the original function f of x times the derivative. So you just take the derivatives one bit at a time, one function at a time, and just add, add the results together. Okay, so here I'll do it down here. So I get dy dx equals the derivative of sine x is cos x. So I just get cos x times the original, the original of this function. So the derivative of this one times that one, plus the derivative of this one times that one. So the derivative of this one is, if I use the chain rule, is going to be 2e to the x. So I've got 2e to the 2x, sorry, 2e to the 2x times sine of x. And that's my derivative. Uh, you can take out, if you really wanted to, take out the e to the 2x as a common factor. See if that leaves us with anything special. Plus 2 sine of x. No, nothing special there. That's about as simple as it can become. All right, let's do quotient rule. Quotient rule is similar to the product rule. In fact, often people just don't even use the, the quotient rule and just stick with the product rule because the product rule or well, the quotient rule comes from a, you know, just comes directly out of the product rule. Okay, so if you've got a function divided by another function, so if you've got f of x divided by h of x, okay, that means the derivative dy dx is equal to, now the way I do this, so I know because the order matters here, you square the bottom one, so, oh, sorry, h of x all squared, okay, then I put h of x here. And then I do similar to the product rule, except it's a minus instead of a plus. Okay, so I put, I square the denominator function, put the original function up, times by the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of the numerator first, minus the derivative of the bottom function, times the original numerator function. Okay, so let's get an example of that. So let's do y equals, now we're just going to make this up. Let's go with, uh, let's go with a relatively easy function on top. Let's go, let's just go x squared and we'll do a square root function down here. Let's go with 3x plus 2. Okay, that'll do. So that's my... That's my function, so dy dx, I'll just follow the rule. So I square the bottom term. So squaring that square root, I get 3x plus 2. I put the original function up first. So I've got, I'm going to write it instead of a square root, I'm going to write a power of half. So I get 3x plus 2 to the half, okay, times the derivative of the top function, which is 2x, minus away. Uh, the opposite, so I've got x squared times the derivative of this function. So the half, I'm going to use chain rule, half comes out the front, times by the derivative inside. Um, take this function, take the, take one away from the power. Okay, so I've got half comes out the front, the derivative of the inside is 3, times uh, th this function, take one away from the power. Okay, we could simplify this a bit. Okay, the reason I chose a function like this is so I can take you through the simplification. 
Okay, so the, the common factor in this one is always going to be, well, we're always going to have this function. It's going to be one less than this one. So we're going to take out 3x plus 2 to the negative half. Okay. Uh, what else have I got in common here? We've got an x. Uh, this is 3 on 2. No. Okay. So I've just got an x, I think, in both of these as well. So I've got x times that bracket. What am I left with? I'm left with 2 minus x or 3 on 2x. 2 minus 3 on 2x. Okay. And then I've got 3x plus 2 on the bottom. Now all this is to the power of 1. So when I bring this down, I've got 3x plus 2 to the half, 3x plus 2 to the 1. That gives me, on top I've just got the x bracket 2 minus 3 on 2x over, now I've got 3x plus 2 to the power of 3 on 2, or 3 halves. So that's like the square root of all of this cubed. Okay, so that's my answer to dy dx. Come on. All right, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes with that because that was completely off the cuff, but we'll see. I'm sure you'll let me know if I've made an error.